Okay, class, we now are talking about the cerebral white matter. The what? Cerebral white matter. Now, you see, here again was the, were the cell bodies within the cortex. Coming down are myelinated, myelinated axons coming from the cell bodies, the axons of those cell bodies. So, consist of deep myelinated fibers and tracts. Remember, a tract is a cluster of fibers in the central nervous system, fibers being axons and dendrites. It is responsible for communication between the cerebral cortex and the lower CNS, which would be the spinal cord and everything. And it also communicates within the cerebrum, within the cerebrum, okay? All right, so when we look at communication, we have what we call commissures. I don't know if you remember. A commissure, let's go here, is when you when one side communicates with the other side. That's a those are commissural fibers. Those are commissural. Association fibers, association fibers. Now, now don't get confused with association areas. Association fibers are axons. And that's when one one side communicates with the other. So let's say the frontal lobe communicates with the occipital lobe in the left hemisphere. Then projection fibers come down into the lower areas. Projection fibers. So commissural projection and association. Commissural projection and association type. Okay. Association same side. All right. We go further then. This is all white matter. We go further. So see, here would be right here. These, these, now see, these right here would be association fibers. Why? Because they're on the same side communicating. Projection go down or up. Projection going down would eventually get into the, into the tracks in the spinal cord. And then commissural would go across. We already showed that. You have to be in this wrong view like that. Okay. All right. So that's what you're looking at. All right. We go further then. Right here. And see right here, this is what we call the internal capsule. Let me come here. The internal capsule. Okay, it's kind of, why they call it that, it kind of capsulates, it's kind of a capsule around this area right here. See, it comes down, and see, that's that, that, that thalamus area here. So it kind of capsulates around that, and they're coming down here. And these would be, what, projection fibers. And see right here, this is the basal nuclei. Now, a nuclei is a, is a cluster of neuronal cell bodies in the central nervous system. I already gave you a chart before. Neuron cell bodies in the central nervous system. So these are the basal nuclei. Now, the reason they have ganglia is because that's the old name. But we changed that name because a ganglia technically is an association of neuron cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. But everybody used to call it this, even when I was in med school. So what we have with the basal ganglia, because remember we had gray matter, white, and then gray. Gray matter, white, then gray. So what we basically have is these basal ganglia, which is the caudate nucleus, see nucleus, putamen, globus pallidus, right? So we have this, the caudate, the putamen, globus pallidus type of thing, okay? And because fibers go through here some will call this the length they look like lens now another one part of this some will call the amygdala caudate put glues and the amygdala but i don't see that here but those are what we call the basal ganglia they coordinate mo mo motions we'll talk about that so here actually here it comes now masses of gray matter found deep within the cortical white the corpus striatum and the reason they call it the body of stripe is because how this goes through and stripes it up. 
how this goes through and stripes it up here. Corpus triatum. And uh, the caudate nucleus, lentiform, composed of the putamen and globus pat. You say, why are they call it the lentiform? Because it looks like a, the lens of your eye. See how this kind of curved? The putamen right there, and globus pallidus, putamen and globus pallidus, it kind of looks, whoever looked at it, hey, that's the way they looked at it when they cut it, it looks like the lens of the eye. And that's why they call these two the lentiform, com those that combined. Fibrils of internal capsule running between and through the caudate and the, and the lentiform nuclei. Let's go here. Matter of fact, I could have been showing you this one. You see right here, Here's the lentiform, which is the putamen and globus pallidus. Here's the internal capsule, and there's the caudate. So that's what they said. Fibers of internal capsule, remember these were the internal capsule, is running between the caudate and the lentiform. Functions associated with subthalamic nuclei and substantia nigra. Substantia nigra is another area in the brain. Actually, that's where dopamine is produced, is in the, you know, Parkinson's disease type is in the substantia nigra. Okay, let's go. So this is called the basal nuclei, old name basal ganglia. Okay. So here again, the basal, looking at it this way, see that's the lentiform, putamen and globus pallid, that's, the, that's that right there. That's the caudate. This is the ventricle right here. Those are the lateral ventricles, and that's the third right there okay here's your thalamus right there that's the thalamus right there see this is a commissural fiber going across right there right there this is the main commissural fiber called the corpus callosum the corpus callosum if, is, is, if you wanted to split the brain in two parts you wanted to split the brain in two parts, then what would happen is you would, in this split brain deal, you cut the corpus callosum. That is the major commissural that you have. That is the major commissural, the corpus callosum, going across. Okay. All right, so we go further. There you are, right there. All right. Functions of the basal nuclei, what are they? Though somewhat elusive, the following are thought to be the functions of the basal nuclei, old name, old name ganglia. Influence muscle activity, particularly starting and stopping movements and regulating the intensity of movements and slow. Okay, so problems, okay, so this is what we call, let's say, a tremor. A resting tremor and an intentional tremor. Okay. A resting tremor is you just sitting there and start shaking. An intentional tremor is you start going for something, but you find just with your arms to the side. But when you start going for something, you get, you start shaking. That's kind of more cerebellum. But, but on the intent, on the just resting tremor, a lot of times it may be somewhat of the basal ganglia. But anyway, uh, inhibit antagonistic and unnecessary movements. So it regulates these movements. See, this is where you get into things like Parkinson's and Huntington's, chorea. These are diseases of trembling and all kind of stuff. The basal nuclei in receive inputs from all the areas of the cerebral cortex above the base of nuclei and from subcortical, those underneath. They, they output is relayed through the thalamus, globus pallus, substantia. They project to the premotor. So they control a lot of stuff, this basal. This is what gives you, it inhibits your antagonistic muscles, activates your agonistic muscles so you don't be, you don't shake. You kind of do things in a nice, smooth, organized, muscular pattern. You're not trembling. You're not shaking. Stuff like this there. 
When there are problems with that, that's when that starts happening. Okay. All right, so we go further. Problems with the basal nuclei could give you Huntington's chorea. Okay, which is, which, Huntington's chorea is like you just, you almost just, when you move, you just jerking all over the spot. And Parkinson's is little motion. It's kind of where you just have a little, where you have a tremor. You have a tremor. Huntington's chorea, which they call the chorea dance, is just massive. Now, the diencephalod, what you have there, and matter of fact, let's start another one for diencephalon, because that's where the thalamus and all that stuff is. Okay. 